Hi, welcome to this Greg Space Shed lesson. Today I'm going to talk about articulation and how you can use different articulation techniques on the bass to make your bass lines groove a lot more. In this case, articulation just means how you produce the notes on your bass with your hands. Now, there are lots of different articulation techniques that you can use on your bass, and I'm gonna go through the most important ones today in this lesson. The first thing you need to be aware of is how you're playing your notes, if you're playing them long or if you're playing them short. Now, this can have a massive effect on your bass lines, how they sound and the feel of your bass lines. So they can sound sloppy if you're not careful, or they can sound funky and tight. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, I've made up a bass groove for this lesson, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to loop the first bar round and round and play that. So what I want you to do is have a listen um, how I'm playing the notes, if I'm playing them long or if I'm playing them short. So you probably noticed that all these notes were short. Now it sounds quite bouncy and quite funky. Now have a listen now if I play the notes longer. Now that completely changes the feel of the bass line. And to me that sounds like it has a bit more of a Motown type feel to the bass line. Now to get these short notes, you can use techniques in your left and your right hand, but the main one I use is with my plucking hand, once I've played the note, if I want it to be really short, then I put my plucking finger back on the note. So we just play the A here, just have a look at my plucking hand. Okay, so this finger's going back on the string. If I, if I wanted a longer note, I'll just let it ring. Okay, and then stop it there. Okay, so you've got to be like really quick getting your finger back on it. And I'm just keeping a note down in my left hand. Now, if I'm playing two notes, look at my left hand now. Okay. After the second note, because there's a rest, I'm lifting my um, whole hand up. So I've got the fingers resting lightly on the strings. Okay, and that in combination with our right hand resting back on the string, um, it will mute the note even more. So you can use a combination of both hands here. What I want you to do now is to pause the video and play through that first bar yourself. So play it really, really slowly to get the hang of it first and make sure that you're playing short notes. Now I've written the whole of this groove out on a PDF, you can get that for free. Um, it's in the usual place below this video in the description, just click that. It's in standard notation and tab. So grab the PDF now if you haven't done so already, pause the video and have a go at that first bar. Well, I hope you got through that bar okay. Um, so it's important, I think, to stress here that there isn't one correct way to articulate your bass line, um, whether you're playing notes long or short. Everyone kind of does it slightly differently, um, but it's important to think about it. So when you're listening to music, um, if it's got a bass line in it, then have a listen to what the bass player is doing. Each bass player's got their own unique way, so just have a listen and see what you like the sound of. But it's definitely um, true that if you want to play a kind of more funky bass line that you, you might play it short. Um, when you're playing rock, for example, you can play all different ways. You can play kind of a short sort of bass line like that, or you can play long. Or a classic is, that's short, long, short, long, short, long. And you do a combination of those different kind of articulations in one bass line sometimes. Um, so it's just something for you to think about. And if you're playing a song with the guitarist, for example, and you're playing a riff in unison with them, which means you're playing along exactly the same line with them, then you want to have a listen to how they are articulating and make sure that you copy that. If you're playing a riff the same, um, but you're playing it slightly differently, it's not going to sound great. And if you're playing songs that have brass, they have very unique ways to phrase things. They might do but let it. So if you're playing some lines with the brass at the ends of phrases, for example, then make sure that you're playing the same articulation as they are. If you're enjoying this lesson, then remember to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by pressing the red subscribe button and also click the bell, which will mean that you get notified of any of my new lessons. 
If you watched lots of my lessons, then you would have definitely heard me banging on about muted notes by now. Um, and I do that because they're really important for bass players. It's a great um, articulation technique to use to make your bass lines funky, for example, or you can use them in um, rock lines just to give some kind of more rhythmic feel to your bass lines. Now, if you're new to muted notes and you don't know the technique, um, then check this video out here. It's a YouTube live that I did, a whole session on muted notes. Um, now, there's a big introduction there but if you look on the red um, play bar at the bottom I've divided it up into sections each with their own title so you can have a look there and just jump to the section that you need um, so yeah that would be really super important if you want to learn the muted note technique but if you look now in bar two of the bass line of the groove on your PDF um, then you'll see some notes with a cross head so you've got a cross instead of the note head, and that means that it's a muted note. Okay, so I'll play um, bars one and two. Okay, um, so bar two. Okay, now it's important to note also that the last two notes of the bar are a hammer on. So you've got E, you've got, sorry, D to E. So what you do is you don't pluck the second note. You just cook, just sort of hammer on with your finger. Okay, I find it easier to do uh, my little finger just because it's stronger to hammer on. Okay, so you play D, pluck the D, hammer on the E. Okay, so we've got to put the muted notes in. So from the beginning of the bar, we've got A. Okay, so we've got muted note. Um, you've got to write the muted note somewhere on the stave or give it a number, but really you can play it in that whole general area. So just have all your fingers lightly on the strings with your first finger over the C. So you play the muted note and then put your finger down on the C. Okay, and the same for D. Okay. So. Okay, and slowly. So you kind of shift your hand up. So you've got it on first finger on C, third fret of the A string, and then um, first finger on D, fifth fret of the A string. Okay, and you can keep it there. So you try that bar now. So that's bar two on the PDF. So hopefully you've got these first two bars down now, so it doesn't matter if you're playing them really, really slowly. Some of you won't be able to get them up to speed, that doesn't matter at all. It's just important that you're practicing these notes um, short and also that you're putting um, the correct kind of hammer-ons in and the muted notes. Okay, and also note in that um, bar two, you've got these kind of um, little lines over some of the notes, they just mean play those long. So you've got long, long, hammer-on, okay? Long, long, hammer on. Okay, now look at the PDF. If you scan through it, you'll see that bars one, three, five, and seven are the same. Um, so now all you've got left to work out is bars four, six, and eight. Okay, and we've got basically these are the ends of the two bar phrases. So we've just got different kind of licks in each of those bars. So have a look at bar four now. Um, we start on the A again. got hammer on so what we're doing up there is D and um, that's on the 12th fret of the D string hammering on onto the E the 14th fret of the D string and then G and that's G is the 12th fret of the G string and we've got a muted note first so remember to rest your fingers lightly okay and you're just having your first finger ready to put down the D so so that's one, two, three. Okay, so you've got a gap there, one, two, and that muted note's just before three. Okay. Okay, so as soon as you play those A's, move into position with your first finger on the 12th fret and the D string. Okay, so you try that bar now. So that's bar four on the PDF. Okay, we'll now look at bar six. Um, so that's the second bar of the third line. So we start on the A again, and then we've got these POs, which are pull-offs. 
Okay, now pull-offs are really the opposite of a hammer-on. You just got to, you can only pull off if you're going to a note that's lower. So we're doing it in reverse for this first one, E to D. So with the hammer-on, we did D to E, and this is the opposite way. Okay, so for a pull-off, you don't pluck the second note again. Um, and when you kind of play this E, when you come off it, you can slightly pluck the string with your finger. It takes a bit of getting used to. Okay, if you take your finger off, you will get a note on the D, but, but if you kind of pluck it, it will be a stronger note. So I'll play that bar. And I'll play it slowly. We've got these muted notes as well, and we've got a kind of muted E right at the end of the bar before we play bar um, seven. Okay, so the way you count that is one, two, three. Okay, so you play just before three again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you try that bar now. So that's bar um, six. Okay, so we'll look at the last bar now. This is bar eight. Start on the A again. Okay, so we've got hammer-ons there. So what we're doing is we're playing A, then we're hammering on A to B. Okay, so that's um, seven to nine, and then G to A, that's five to seven, and then D to E, five to seven on the A string. Okay, I'll play that full speed. I'll play it slowly. Okay, so you've got to put those muted notes in. So again, uh, keep when when I, when you've played the first A's, get your first finger on the seventh fret of the D string, and play the muted note there. Rest your fingers lightly, and then shift down. Okay, one, two, and you're playing just after the beat, just after beats two, three, and four. I'll try and play and count. It's quite tricky. This one, one, two, three. Four. Okay. Okay, so try that bar. And if you have to do it really slowly, it doesn't matter at all. Okay. Right, well, you now should be able to put the whole bass groove together. Um, some of you might find it really tricky. Um, if that's the case, just stick to kind of two bars at a time very very slowly it's more important that you play it slowly say at 60 beats per minute and play it correctly with the correct articulation then play it at full speed at 100 bpm um, getting everything wrong okay um, so just go to the level that you're at and even if you just manage to work through the first two bars and start thinking about short and long notes that's really the biggest takeaway that I want you to get from this lesson so I'll just play through the whole bass line for you now So that's it for the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, can you please like and share the video and leave a comment below. I love seeing your comments. Let me know how you got on with the lesson, what you found tricky, if you had some takeaways from it, some light bulb moments, it's great to hear those as well. And also what um, kind of bass players you listen to, if you like any particular articulations that they do, how they play their bass lines, how they play the notes, short or long. Um, just let me know in the comments. I make sure that I reply to all of those comments. And if you feel that you got value out of this lesson, you want to keep these lessons free then you can always buy me a coffee the links at the bottom of the screen here um, it's a five dollar coffee you can just follow the link you can do um, I think it's PayPal or Stripe um, and also if you want a clickable link um, in the description below this video um, you'll find a link there and also the links to the PDFs um, news about my base courses loads of links there so have a look in the description it's really useful um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking the red subscribe button and click the notification bell. And hopefully I'll see you very soon. This is Greg from Greg's Spaceship.